Have a look at something else here. It is uh, 10 years on Sunday since David Hooks, the Australian cricketer and 3AW employee, friend of the, a lot of people here, died after that one punch outside a, uh, a hotel in uh, Middle Park. Now, uh, a man was charged but, uh, but cleared of anything there. That's not the point. The point is here we are all these years later still talking about these uh, one punch deaths up in Sydney. Daniel Christie, 18, died a couple of days ago after being assaulted on New Year's Eve. It happens in Melbourne. Uh, we've got the McCready Bryan situation. We have, we have assaults and incidents regularly happening on the streets of Melbourne. Why? It's not just booze. Booze is part of it. But it's not just alcohol. There's all sorts of other reasons. And I think we've got to get really analyse them, to think about them, to, to, to dig into it and say, what is the reason for the aggression and the anger and the violence and, and, and the, the propensity for extreme violence, um, fueled by alcohol at times, but not always. In the studio with me is Patrick Crosswell. It's his 21st birthday today. Uh, he's a little lucky to be here with us to to recognise that fact because a, a few days ago uh, he was attacked in the city, in Melbourne. His mother, in fact, alerted to us to this by uh, email. Patrick, good morning. Morning, Neil. Happy birthday. Thanks. <laughs> you feel lucky to be here? Um, yeah, I, I guess it could have turned out differently. Could have been could have been a lot worse. How are you? Um, all right now, physically, but it, I mean, I haven't been back into the city after dark yet, but yeah. When did it happen? Um, weekend before last. And what happened? Uh, I'd sort of finished up um, on a Saturday night and, and went to walk down to to Flinders Street and I was walking through Chinatown and um, there were a group of, of people who I walked through and, and um, sort of out of nowhere I was, first thing I knew I was being pushed, the next thing I'd been punched in the face and um, within a matter of seconds I was on the ground having my face kicked. Um, and there were probably about ten or fifteen of them, so any any ability to fight back or anything was was non-existent. What time was it? You reckon? It's probably about three a.m. in the morning. Okay. Uh, you had a night on the town. Were you drunk? No, no. What provoked it? I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. Um, I, I I I think it was because I was by myself. Um, I, there was no provocation at all in in terms of. Any, any looks or anything being said or, or anything like that. It was me walking alone down down Chinatown and uh, 15 courageous people deciding to surround me and have a bit of fun. Did they say anything to you at any stage? Oh, there were a few expletives as they were um, having their way, I guess, but no, there was no, no justification offered. Okay, but were they sort of screaming at you when you are on the ground or, or what were they doing? No, um... So I was punched in the face a few times and tried to, as anyone would, try to run. And um, of the group, I think about four or five of them chased me about 10 metres, kicked me in the back of the legs. And once I was on the ground, um, I copped a few sort of boots to the face before I was able to put my hands over my face. And the police have said that um, putting my hands over my face probably saved me um, some, some more severe injuries. Um, so... I guess as, as random assaults go, um, it, was a, it was a pretty good one. Did they rob you? No. They're just out to bash you? Yeah. Did they, could you smell alcohol? Do you, do you think they were drunk or drug affected? They certainly weren't acting sober. Um, as to what was causing it, I couldn't tell you. Um, but, yeah, they, there was violence in their eyes, you know. It was, um, they, they were aggressive. Did you get the feeling that they were just hanging around looking for somebody to bash? Um, yeah, I mean, they were sitting in an alleyway as a group talking um, and I was the unlucky one who was by myself. And and the thing was, there were other groups of people walking down Chinatown as well. Um, so I think I think it was something to do with the fact I was by myself. Mm. So you went to the police? Yeah, I... Um, I ran back to the hotel I was at and, and I found it rather disappointing actually because they wouldn't let me back in the venue and it was a, a problem with, the police have said to me that it was, it was more than likely an issue with them fearing their liquor licence being revoked or having any police attention drawn but I ended up... Um, you must have been bleeding, were you? Yeah, I was covered in blood and um, they went and got me a bottle of water but they wouldn't let me back inside. Um, I hailed down a 
passing police car, which I think was actually going to break up that group. Um, and I went back to the station and, and gave a statement. What did they say? They they were quite helpful. Um, there's no doubt about that. But they were they made it rather evident that it's very very hard given the ethnicity of the group. Um, it's very hard to to isolate the individual who's done it. And I got the distinct impression that they um, weren't able to. I mean, on the radio, um, they were on the police radio over the course of the night, and and um, we're too fearful to be pulling over quote-unquote, every African in the in the street. Well, what was the ethnicity of the group, do you think? I think it was Sudanese. That's, so they're tall, young black men? Yes. Could be Australian-born, but of Sudanese origin? Yep. Was there any discussion of racial profiling? Because that's really been an issue. Not in a direct sense. So there was never they never said we can't racially profile, but um, they did say that the problem is, as from a physical perspective, a description between different members of that um, racial background are, are so similar that one of the only features they can really get people on are their clothing, um, which proved to be a, a problem because, uh, unfortunately, they know they know the system, they know how it's used, and um, I was told that they'd picked up one guy who'd uh, changed his clothes twice in that night, so um, th they're aware on both sides of what the problems are. So what would provoke... What's behind it, do you think? I mean, we talk about alcohol being the, the driver behind uh, a lot of this violence. It doesn't sound as if it was in this case. What motivates it, do you reckon? I, I really couldn't tell you. Um, it, it's in part a cultural problem. I mean, I, it, I, it, it's unbelievable that people go out, and I think the Prime Minister said it recently, they're going out not looking for fights but for victims, and um, it's really, f for, for the average person, it's pretty gutless to... You know, attack somebody when you've you've got fifteen of your mates to back you up. Um, but and as to why that occurs, I, I couldn't tell you. So there's, there's a couple of issues here. One is the the motivation. The other is the whether the police are feel in any way restricted because of the the debate over racial profiling. I I, I wouldn't see anything wrong in a racial sense for police to say. OK, Patrick's been assaulted by a group of 15 men who look to be young Sudanese. If you're a copper out on the street and you see a gang of uh, young Sudanese-looking people, stop them, talk to them, interview them. Might be them, might not. I mean, it's like saying um, a, a short little bloke with a goatee beard, like me, is wanted for questioning. I don't see any problem with it, do you? I, I don't see a problem with it, no. Yeah. Would you go back into the city? I, I will. Um, probably, probably going home a bit earlier than than that though, um, and probably be taking more precautions. You wouldn't walk alone again. No, I'd be getting a cab. But you see, you should be able to go home at three a.m. And and as you say, it wasn't like it was uh, the city was deserted. At well, that it was time. a Saturday night, so you wouldn't expect, and particularly where it was, we're talking Little Burke Street between Russell and and Flint and um, Swanston Street. Right? You you should. You should feel safe to walk around that part of town on a Saturday night, at least. Patrick, if you just put the headphones on, we've got Jennifer Cross. Well, your mother is on the line. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Neil. How are you? Well, I'm okay. <laughs> we've heard from a, from a very uh, articulate son of yours. What's your feeling about it all? Look, I I can't tell you how I feel. I still feel angry. I feel hurt. And and Neil. I just feel we have got to do something to stop this. This just proves it can happen to anyone at any time. Patrick wasn't asking for trouble. I'm so proud of him and I'm so thankful that it wasn't a lot worse. What motivates it, do you think? Have you got oh. any theories? I mean, it's just senseless. Look, we hear this phrase, totally senseless violence. This is senseless violence. Absolute senseless violence. It is a culture that I am not used to. It is something I don't think any of us have ever seen in this country before where people go out just looking for trouble. I've spoken at length about it with Patrick and, yeah, I don't know. But I just know as a mum, I'm still hurting. Well, what might have been? Well, that's it. What might have been, that one punch? Yep, absolutely. Right. Thank goodness he knew to, to roll into a ball and... Thank goodness he was able to get away. 
Patrick, do your friends, have you, have you had any friends who have been in a similar situation, been assaulted? No, well, that's the thing. I mean, I've never met anybody who it's happened to. Um, I've never met anybody who knows anyone that it's happened to. So for me in my social circle, it's, it's um, a new experience. I think, what do we do, uh, Jennifer? I mean, we, surely we've got to... Look, we, I, we, we can't know, just I, blame alcohol. Alcohol's part of it, but it's not the whole reason. No, oh, no, not at all. I think as a community, we have got to start talking about it, talking about it every day until we, until we stop this problem happening. I think we need to talk to it in schools. I think we need to talk to it in groups that are happening. I think the police, the all levels of government. It is not one problem, it is our problem collectively as a community and we've just got to do something about it. Well look, Jennifer, thanks for talking to us. It'll be a special 21st, won't it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. A bit lucky to have him. Absolutely. Love him to death and I'm so proud of him. Oh, and he's not embarrassed by that at all, is he? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer Crosswell, Patrick's mother. And Patrick, thank you for coming in. I you, you're right, you'll get, you'll get over it, you'll get through it, but it's, mm. it's something you shouldn't have to go through, is it? And I'm sure you'll remember it the rest of your life, to be down on the ground with people kicking in the face for no reason. Well, not that any reason could justify yeah. it, but it's just wrong. Absolutely. Maybe we can change the world. Let's hope. <laughs> Thank you for your time and happy birthday. Thanks very much. Patrick Croswell.